And we have started the recording. I'm having to write something down right quick. OK. So the first question we got is a review question, and it's fine because it's also a good test question. These two are good to two, two good test questions. This is 3021. This is the review. Uh, review homework skills review number eight. And hopefully those skills reviews are helping y'all. I hope they are because that's why I added them in there. OK, this one says multiply blah, 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 blah. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate everything. OK, let me get my handy dandy. Word document situated. There we go. Why is this thing? Just give me a second. My cat's been playing with this thing and got it all out of kilter. There. All right. So we got the square root of 27 X Y to the third Z. And then we got the square root of 9 X squared Y squared Z. OK, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine like terms. And I'm going to put the 27 and 9 because the square root of A times the square root of B is equal to the square root of AB. So if you're multiplying, you can put everything under one radical. OK, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put everything under one radical. So the square root of 27 times 9, the square root of x times x squared, the square root of y to the third y squared, and the square root of z and z. OK, now I put them under four separate, but you can put them under one big radical if you want to. Um, I'm going to break this up into 3 times 9 times 9. I'm going to make this the square root of x to the third, the square root of y to the fifth, and the square root of z squared. OK, now. Everything, and I'm going to take my handy dandy pink highlighter. Everything in these radicals is, since there's nothing there, it's an index of two. So you've got to put everything in terms of square root. Now we've already done that with everything except for these two. So I've got to break this one up. Technically, I shouldn't have put it together because you already had a square root right there, but I'm just trying to get everything together. So what is the square root of 9? That means I want somebody to talk. 3. Thank you. I tell you what. Thank you so much. Who was that? Was that Mr. Malota? It was, it was Majd. Uh, okay, thank you. It's so nice to have people that's not weaned on a pickle that will talk to me. 
All right, so I'm going to take the square root of that and that. And three times three is nine. So nine times square root of three. And I'm going to break this up into the square root of x squared times square root of x. And I'm going to break this up into the square root of y to the fourth times y. And what is the square root of z squared? Z. Okay, so I got my perfect squares. I got, got a perfect square here now. And a perfect square here. So 9 times square root of 3. X times square root of X. Y squared times square root of Y. And Z. And what's left? Well, the only thing you can do now is multiply the terms that are outside the, the radical and multiply the terms that are inside the radical. So what do we have outside the radical? We have 9 times x times y squared times z. And what do we have inside the radical? 3 times x times y. Now, one thing you're going to learn about radicals, one thing you're going to learn about exponents, and one thing you're going to learn about logarithms. You don't have to do them the same way. Now, I'm sure there's probably three or four different ways you could have done this problem. Some of you had, some of y'all even invented radicals, okay? But I do it this way to kind of make sure that you understand what you're doing for the person that sucks at radicals, okay? I'm not talking about the person that invented radicals. I'm talking about the person that sucks at radicals. So hopefully that'll help you. So that's your answer. So if I don't have to go around the world to type it in, I'll try to type it in. Let's see how bad it is to type it in. 9xy squared, hold on a second, 9xy shift up squared over to the right z times the square root of 3xy. And we feel good about ourselves. Good test question. If I could put that on the test, I'll put it on there. Next question. 5.225 slash 9. Hold on a second. One of my cats, one of my cats likes carrying laundry out of the mud room into the den. And he carries socks and little towels and and he was carrying my son's underwear <laughs> in the den. <laughs> oh me, these cats. Some of y'all cat people can appreciate what I'm talking about. And of course, nobody says anything because y'all don't associate. Okay, the next the next question is nine log of nine to the fifth power. Now you don't know this yet because we haven't gone through the properties yet, but this is a property. If this base equals this base, your answer is this number. So the answer to this question 
is 5. Of course, you don't know that yet. So you're going to learn it when I show you the properties today. And I think I've already shown y'all properties, but we'll look and see. So that's going to be 5. And that's the answer there. OK, so that takes care of. Oh, I skipped one. I think I just did that one. Did I just do that one? Yeah, I did. So I skipped one. I skipped this one. Let me delete that one. And I didn't do 31. OK, rationalize. Rationalize the denominator. The square root of 18 over the square root of 5. Well, I'm going to multiply by the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Why did I pick the square root of 5 over the square root of 5? Well, what's 5 times 5? That means I want somebody to talk. 25. That is a perfect what? 25 is a perfect square. So that's why I multiplied by the square root of 5. If this was 6, I'd multiply by the square root of 6. If this was square root of 7, I'd multiply by the square root of 7 over square root of 7. Because I'm going to get the square root of 18 times square root of 5 over the square root of 25. And you want this on the bottom because what is the square root of 25? 5. And that's what you want. You want to get rid of the radical. And that's, is it necessary? No, mathematically it's not necessarily, not necessary, but in some cultures, and I say this, I say this because I had a professor at Clemson and she was an Asian professor. And she she told us this story when we were doing radicals. She said, I think this is so funny. And because she grew up in China or Asia, wherever she grew up, I can't remember. And they didn't care about the radical being in the denominator. And she said, it's all cultural, it's all cultural. And she's right, there's a lot of cultures that could care less whether the radicals in the denominator. So, and this is square root of two, square root of nine, square root of five, and that's equal to three times square root of 10 over five. So three times square root of 10 over five. Three times square root of 10. I hit three, thank you very much. Square root of 10 over five. Both of those, are all three of those are good test questions. I did that one. All right, this is, let's see if these are in order. 41, 41, these are, okay, this one is the least one. 513, question number three, online homework. Okay. First of all, whenever you graph a logarithm, I mean, an exponential, they're going to look like this, whether it's y to the 2x, and whether it's uh, f of x is equal to 2 to the x, or f of x is equal to e to the x. Either one. He's got, let me move this over a little bit. Okay. 
They've got my thing messed up and it's just not right. I'm running out of table. There. And they're basically going to look like this. They always cross at one. Why do they always cross at one? Well, plug in X is equal to zero. What's anything, what's any number raised to the zero power? That means I want somebody to talk. Was well, any number raised to the zero power? Okay, y'all starting to piss me off. Zero. zero. Thank you. I know you get tired of answering everything, but Mr. Abdallah, but, but I don't have any, I gotta have some interaction. Do you understand that? Yeah, I, I do. I do. Okay. I just I just don't want you to think I'm crazy. It just it takes, you know, in the career, in academia or in a relationship, you have to you have to communicate. And some of these students, they they act like they don't communicate. It's just going to go away. You don't communicate, you're going to end up with problems, whether it's in a relationship or in a in a in a work setting. You, you, you're not going to be an introvert and be successful. You're not. So I'm just telling you that. Miss Hollister's already, she won't even talk to me anymore. It's like, it's like y'all are a plague. Y'all just turn to people that communicate. Y'all turn them into people that don't communicate. I don't understand it. Anyway, I'm just picking on you, Miss Hollister. You're probably asleep. I don't blame you. All right, so it doesn't matter which you could have f of x is equal to 100 to the x power. It's still going to go through 1 because 100 to the 0 power is 1. So it doesn't matter. They're all going to look like this. Now, the steepness, according to well, the e is 2.716 dot, dot, dot. So these two are very close together. So that's what that's going to look like. So, and they're going to ask you, are they going to ask you for some numbers? I don't know, but go ahead and graph it. So let's take our handy dandy graph. Well, as soon as I can pull up the cal calculator, y is equal e second, natural log to the x power and of course it's not going to let me oh god this is frustrating i don't know why i just don't clear it to begin with second e to the x and graph and zoom standard and there it is it always crosses at one and I can do another one. Y is equal to 100 to the X power. E to the X power, or sorry, 100 to the X power. So that's going to be to the X power. Okay, see where it crosses? Crosses at one. Of course, it's skinnier because of the 10 or the 100. One more. Let's do. I'll do it in green. Let's do. 52. To the X power. And it crosses right here. Crosses at one. All of them across at one. So anyway, let's go back and delete those two. 
clear, clear. And you can go back to this one, hit second table, and you can get whatever numbers they want you to get. So let's see what the question asks. Find one, negative four, and two. Well, I'm just going to go and find, I'm not going to write them down. I'm just going to show you. Negative one, or one, is 2.7183, and that is the, that constant right there, that's what's equal to E. E is equal to 2.7182818284589. That is E right there. Four, negative four. Negative four gives you that number. And positive two gives you that number. The horizontal asymptote is this right here because it never touches it, just keeps on going and going and going, never touches it. So that would be the X axis. So it looks like this. And I'm not going to type all those in. Well, F of one, we said would be two point Oh my Lord. 2.7183. 2.7183. Okay, I'm not going to go through all this, so I'm not going to play games and there. 2.718, and that's going to be the number we found on the table. Between people not talking and wanting three decimals instead of four decimals, I'm losing my patience. F of two, you look it up on the table. And the horizontal is the x-axis. And the y-intercept is zero comma one. Because if I type it in without parentheses, it's going to want parentheses. If I type it out without, type it with parentheses, it's going to want it without parentheses. So there. I'm sorry, but my last class was, got me impatient also. They, they didn't talk and it, and it just makes the class yucky. So next. 5.1, let's see, that's 37, 31. So let's see. Three. Okay, 41, 37, 31. So let's do 5.1, 31 slash 9. Or did we just do that? I don't think we did. Okay. Use your knowledge of transformations to, okay, y is equal to e to the negative x. We just got through saying that y is equal e to the x. y is equal e to the x looks like this. So what would y equal e to the negative x look like? Well, it would look like that. Now, I would, if I was you, I would do all four of them. I would do y is equal e to the x. That's your basic model. Y is equal to E to the negative X. Okay. 
And that's that one. Oh, me. I'm just. Negative. There you go. What about negative e to the x? Well, negative e to the x would look like this. Let's use a different color, though. Let's use a greenish color. There we go. So let's do, what did I just say? Negative e to the x. So that would be negative e to the x. So you might want to add, I want to draw all four of these so you don't get messed up. Graph. And then the last one, let's see, negative e to the negative x. We'll do that in a different color. Okay, blue, magenta, and green. Let's see if we got a red. Blue, magenta, and green. Do it in orange. And that's going to be negative second e to the x negative. Oh. Hold on. I'm having brain bubbles and can't hit the right button. Second, e to the x, negative x. Now, you need to write down those four graphs and write them in different colors. The green. and the orange. Where is my fluorescent orange? I can't see it right now, but. That's e to the x. That's e to the negative x. The green is negative e to the x. And the orange is negative e to the negative x. So the black and the green are inverses of each other. See, they're, they're, see the black and the green, they just go the opposite direction. Okay. And the pink and the orange are going in the opposite direction. Okay. But when you do the negative exponent, you change from an increasing to a what? What's the opposite of increasing? Decreasing. Thank you. Just like this one is decreasing and this one is increasing if you read from left to right okay so it might help you to write all four of those down so you know the difference between them all these are good test questions these are all good test questions that you're sending me well, I told you that a lot of 5.1 and some of 5.2 is just a calculator. 
137 slash 11. Okay, this one is f of x is equal to 18,000 times 4 raised to the negative 0.06x power. First thing I'm going to do is graph this one. Because when you got one like this, the only thing you can do is graph it. Unless you're Rain Man, you're not going to be able to do very much with that unless you have a calculator. So clear, 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 clear. And that's going to be 18,000 times. Four raised to the negative point zero six X and graph. Zoom standard. Zoom fit. There we go. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see it. There we go. Now, what what is what? Well, this whole thing is equal to dollars. And X is the number of weeks after the ad campaign. OK, and why is the dollars? So it looks like it's decreasing. Yes, yeah, decreasing. All right, let's see what questions they ask. Determine the sales at the end of the ad campaign. Well, at the end of the ad campaign, X is equal to zero. So zero should be 18,000. We'll go to the handy dandy table and go find zero. Zero is 18,000. So A, zero comma 18,000. And of course, 18,000 is your answer. Second question. Determine the sales seven weeks after the end of the campaign. Well, that's going to be handy in the calculator. Seven would be seven. And I'm going to write down cents. So that's going to be 10,000. So B after seven weeks. You've got $10,056.58. I'm just writing this down, not doing anything special. And then the last question, does this model indicate that the value ever reaches zero? No, logs and exponents, they do not reach zero. Okay, you can say that right now. They do not reach zero. So C is going to be no because exponents, exponential functions, and logarithmic functions, they converge but never touch. Okay, so there's your three answers. That's a good test question. So, and plus it's short and sweet. In other words, they give you this, you graph it, you find that because zero means no time. Seven weeks after it's over, that's your number looking at your table. And we know that exponentials and logarithms, 
do not touch zero. They usually converge on zero, which means they never touch it. So that would be 18,000. And then 10,056. Point five eight. Ten thousand and fifty five, sorry. Yeah, I got it, y'all. Thank thank you for telling me. No. Next question. I did that one. There it is, 41. This is 41 slash 13. Okay. So well, this is our PERT continuous. A is equal to PERT. Oh, that's not right. P E to the R T. There we go. And that means eight thousand E to the point zero nine T. And you're going to graph that. Again, I told you five point one, some of five point two. It's just using the calculator. Y is equal to 8,000. I'm just going to hit delete there. 8,000 E. So I'm going to put an E right here. To the point zero 0.09 T. So I'm just going to delete. There, E to the point zero nine T or X and graph. And now you can just go to the table, excuse me, and find whatever you want. So go to the table and find the numbers you want. Or let's see what they want. I don't even know what they want. Let's see. Okay, well, it looks like this one, I think. Use the graph to estimate when the future value will be 28,000. So Y is equal to 28,000. It's 280,000. No, it's not. Okay. And graph. Second, trace. Again, this is all, this is all calculator drills. This is all this is. And pick your guess. Looks like somewhere right in there. And that is 14 years. 13.92 is 14, but let's see what they want. 13.92. I <clears throat> can't believe they do this. Why do they do this? 28203.37. Now you know this is a calculator drill because they just give you two different numbers and you do the same thing. Second, 
trace, intersect, enter, enter, put you a guess right about there. 14. And X is equal to 10 and 25. And I'm not going to do these numbers because I, I need to move on. But uh, hit the table, second table, and go to you see 10 and 25. There's 10. 10 is equal to, write this down, 19676.82. So that's what you should pull up on your calculator. And now 25 is $75,901.89. And we did that whole problem pretty much on a calculator. Okay, next question. I think that's it. Because I think those two are the same. Ms. Babineau, is that okay? Since you asked the other question, you good with that one? Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, now let's finish with, I think I sent y'all, let me check in the files. I did, I did send y'all exponential and logs. I sent y'all that, right? Yes. Okay, if you look, the logarithm, the, the logarithm terms are down at the bottom, and we're going to talk about these today. So you might want to get that sheet out that I told you to print out, I told you to make index cards out of each one. This is an index card, and you can put this, this right here on top of the index card, and then put these. So really the front and back of an index card. Because you can put this one sentence right here. You can put that on number one, uh, and these number two, number three, number four. You could do it like that. Then just have a front and a back. Okay, let's go to, I'm, I'm just showing you this because I want you to know that you have this material. You don't have to copy it down when I go through it in the notes. Sorry, hold on. Got to fix my monitors back. Okay. And here, and go ahead and write these down. These are kind of like little, little properties. These are more of constant properties. In other words, if the bases are the same, if these two numbers are the same, then the answer is one. If log of any number, will be zero. I meant, sorry, log of one is zero. And if you base is equal to this, if the bases are equal, if those two numbers right there are the same, then the answer, we did that problem a while ago on the homework, it was nine log base nine. If the, if the exponent base is the same as the logarithm base, then you can just write down, boom, that's it. There it is right there. If this base is the same as this base, right, anyway you see it, then the answer is X. And anytime the bases are the same, then this number is equal to this number. Now, you can add that to your logarithmic card. These are just little properties that 
you just know that you don't have to do much. You just look at them and say, oh, okay, that equals one or that equals zero. And you can't take the log of a negative number, those kind of properties. Give me 30 seconds to write those down because I didn't include those with your next card. Now, these are the properties that I'm going to test you on. And I can tell you right now, and I'm going to write this down. You don't, you shouldn't have to write this down because you should have done printed it out. Okay, I'm going to just move to this right quick and I'm going to just tell you this right now. 5.1, where I'm just talking about exponential functions, exponential functions and graphing it and doing the vertical horizontal shift, you're talking about 20% of the test. Five point whatever section, is this five, it's still 5.2? Uh, 5.2 and 5.3 is your properties rewrite. And 5.3, is properties solving equations. And this is 80% of the test. So make sure you understand what we're fixing to go over and 5.3 because that's going to be 80% of your test. And I don't even know if I'm going to use 5.4, but I'll look at it and see. OK, so these properties are very important. Oh, and I forgot to show y'all also, and I'm just telling you this because uh, some of y'all need to know this and I'm don't. I know I've shown y'all before, but this is my classes for spring semester. OK, and I think some of y'all may be interested in that math 109. So you might want to write that down. And I know I, I, I might have showed you all this last week. I can't remember. I think I did. Um, if I didn't, I'm sorry. But that Math 130, some of y'all said you are in Math 109. That's your next class. So you need to go ahead and get in there before it fills up. Okay. So let's go ahead and do an example. I'm going to have to go to slideshow because it's going to show you how to do it. If I don't, there we go. OK, they give us, well, they, you're not supposed to do the solution. Anyway, cover up the solution. And I'm going to write them down and we're going to do one. So the first one is log base three of x plus 4 log base 3 of y. And the other one is 1 half log of a minus 3 log of b. Make sure I wrote it down right. Log base 3 of x plus 4 log base 3 of y one half log of A minus three log of B. Okay, so what do we do first? Well, you see that big plus right there. That plus tells you product rule. And this plus over here tells you quotient rule.
This says product rule. And this says quotient rule. Now, before I do that, I've got a number in front of this log. And if you will look at the power rule, you will see that if you have a number in front of the log, you can actually rewrite it with that four as an exponent. We have a one half and a three. So before I do the product or the, before I do the product or the quotient rule, I'm going to do the power rule first. And I'm going to move that power as I'm going to move it from the front to the exponent. So I'm going to pull it, put it right there, and put this right there. And put this right there. And that's using the power rule. So I'm going to have log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of y to the fourth. And then here I'm going to have log a of 1 half minus log b of 3. And now I have the same base. And since I have the same base, that's a base 10, and that's a base 10 since there's nothing there. And that's the rule for you to remember. If there's nothing there, it's a 10. OK, so since I've got the same bases and I've got a plus right here. And a negative right here, I can use my power product rule and quotient rule. Next, and that's going to give me log. Base three. Of X times y raised to the fourth or log base three x y to the fourth and then this one since this is division it's log of a to the one half divided by b to the third And that's how you rewrite. Now you can go both ways. You can go from simplifying to expanding. It doesn't matter. It depends on what they give you. They give you one that's condensed like this or simplified. You need to expand it. If they give you one that's got a plus or a minus in front of it, then you need to condense it. Or simplify it. As you can see, that is, you're going to bring that three up, and that's going to be natural log of 5x minus natural log of z to the third. And since that is division, ends up like that. Give you a second to write that down.
And that is 5.2. And of course, you're going to see some homework questions, but I want to go ahead and move 5.3 so we can look at those questions. If I could find it, 5.3. Because this is what I want you to learn how to do. Well, yeah, we can do that one. This is a this is a uh, this is a exponential, and they say solve it for so three thousand is equal to one fifty times ten to the four t power. I've already wrote it down for you, so there it is. Divide by 150. And that takes out a zero here. And 15 into 300 would go how many times? 20? Oh gosh, Hubert, that's an exponent. How do we, well, you can do it two ways. You can take the log of both sides, or you can use the definition of a logarithm. Definition of a logarithm says, y is equal to log base a of x, and that yields x is equal to a to the y. Now that's the definition of a logarithm. And remember what I told you. I told you that if you don't learn the definition of a logarithm, you're going to suck at logarithms. So if you don't learn this, you're going to say to yourself, well, I don't know how to solve this. And you will look at it for 15 minutes, and then you'll just go to the next problem. So I got, well, I got this right here. X is equal A to the Y. So X is equal to 20. A is equal to 10. And Y is equal to 4t. So y is going to be 4t is equal to log base what? Base 10 of 20. And now just divide by 4. T is equal to that. Now, of course, I told you log base 10 is LOG. So all you got to do is take the log of 20 in your calculator and divide by 4. So log of 20, because I'm not going to ask y'all. Y'all won't tell me. Y'all just sit there. So that'd be the log of 20 divided by four. 0.3253. There it is. That's the test question right there.
Now you could have done it like this also. Make a note of this that you could have said y is equal to 3000 and y is equal to 150 10 to the 4x and find the intersection point. Next question. Well, I think we just did that one. Oh. Prove that at times it takes uh, investment double its value if the interest rate is ours compounded continuously. Well, you could plug that in for T. And that's going to be R to the LN2 over R. And the R's would cancel. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but we'll try it. I've never seen this one before. So S is equal to PE to the RT. But they're telling you that T is equal to the natural log of 2 over N, over R. So I'm going to plug that in. S is equal to PE to the parentheses T. Oh, shoot. S is equal to PE to the R times parentheses and that natural log of 2 over R and the R's cancel. And that leaves you with S is equal to PE to the natural log of 2. Well, e to the natural log of 2 is a number. So take your handy dandy calculator and go e to the natural log of 2. Second, e to the natural log of 2. I think you're going to see it's going to be 2 because the natural log and the e cancels. At least that's what my calculus in the past has told me. So E to the natural log of 2, close parentheses, equals. Yep. So S is equal to 2P. And 2 is another word for saying double. And you need to make a note, anytime you raise E to the natural log of a number, it's going to be that number. Because E, the natural log, E to the LOG base E, remember? They cancel. So anytime you raise E to the natural log, it's going to cancel and you're going to be whatever number is beside the natural log. That's not really a test question because I've never seen it before. So that must have, that must be a new slide. Change base formula. I already showed you that, and it's on your card. There's an example. This is a test question because it's real simple. I put this on the test question. I put this on the test, not so you learn it, just so you'll get extra points because you don't have to think very hard. Okay, log base 8 of 124. Your calculator cannot calculate that. So you've got to change it into either LOG base 10 of 124 over 
LOG base 10 of 8, or LOG base E of 124 over LOG base E of 8, which is the natural log of 124 over the natural log of 8. And both of these answers will give you the same thing because this is log of 24 over log of 8. They'll give you the same answer. So log of 24 divided by log of 8. 1.5283. Okay, we did something wrong. Log 124 over, did I do log of 24? What did I do? Yeah, I screwed it up. I said log of 24. Thank you for telling me. Appreciate it, class. Y'all suck. Log of 124 divided by log of 8. I don't know what I'd do without y'all helping me out. 2.3. About that. 2.318. I'm just glad I got students to tell me when I make a mistake and communicate with me. Change that to the log of X over the log of 3. Change that natural log of X over natural log of 3. So write both of those down so you'll know how to do a change base formula. I mean, it's not a big deal. You just take the log of X over the log of whatever that number is. Log, natural log of X over the natural log. You can do it with base E or base 10, either one. Okay, this one, you graph it. I'm not going to show you this one because I've already done this problem two or three times. I'm going to write it down for you. S is equal to 10,000, 1.10 to the T, T power. We did this in a homework question. First thing you're going to do, is you're going to graph it. Graph it on your TI. And then you're either going to set, you're either going to set the next graph to a big number like 2,000 or 25,000 or whatever, and then find the intersection. So set to blank, find intersection like we did in that homework problem or they're going to give you an x or a couple of x's and you go to the table second what is it second what that's all right i'll, I'll get it i'll get it fellas appreciate it second trace no, second graph. And table and find the X values and write down the Y values. So, you know, let's see what they ask. So you would set Y equal to 45, 95, 950. So I'm going to do that right quick for you. Y equals 
So take my handy dandy calculator. Y is equal to 10,000. I'm going to clear because it's so aggravating to delete with this calculator. I'm just going to clear both of them. So that'd be 10,000 times parentheses 1.10 x to the y x. And then I'm going to graph 45,950. And graph. And then I'm going to, this is fat. It looks just like that homework problem we did. Hit second. Calc. Intersect. Click on that one, click on that one. And guess. There is the intersection at 16 years or whatever, 45,950. So 16 years or whatever they're asking you about, time period, it'll be 16. And then let's say they ask you, what is the value at five years? Then you would hit second graph and go to five years. Five years, you would have $16,105.10. What about at 10 years? At 10 years, you would have $25,937.42. But what about 15 years? 15 years, you would have $41,772.48. And that's how you do that problem. Sixteen years is what we got. Okay, these two. Then I'm gonna shut down after this. You have a word definition email. of a logarithm. Definition of a logarithm. You're gonna divide by six first over here. So I'll go ahead and start you off. A is four zero nine six equals eight to the two X and B. Oops, B is six times four to the three X minus two equals 120. Both of them are definition of a logarithm. I can tell because there's no logs in there and the only way to solve an exponential is to either take the log of both sides or definition of a logarithm. And the definition of a logarithm is y is equal to log base a of x is given us a to the y is equal to x. So we've got a to the y is equal to x right here. So a is equal to 8, y is equal to 2x, and x is equal to 4096. Therefore, y is 2x is equal to log base 8 of 496. Hold on. Yeah. And divide by 2, divide by 2, and x is equal to Whatever this comes out to be, that would be log of 4096 divided by log of 8. Divide that by 2. And that would be some number. This one you divide by 6 on both sides and you get 4 to the 3x minus 2 is equal to 60 or I'm sorry, 20. And now you have definition of a logarithm just like you have here. So that would be y 3x minus 2 is equal to log base a of x. 
And this is a number right here. This is a number. So you just type that in a calculator and solve it like a pre-algebra problem. Bring you two over here. So that's going to be plus two divided by three. So X is equal to the log base four of 20 plus two that divided by three. Now, I know it's time, but I want to show you one more. And I that gum blind. Sorry about that. There we go. I want to show you these are the first sets of you know this right here. You know that right there is a is a possible test question. These two are possible test questions, but these are definition of a logarithm. OK, I want to show you one right quick. I'm not going to do it, but I'm just going to show you if they've got one. Show you what kind of test questions I'm going to ask. Now, I may ask some of these, but this ain't the meat. Let's see if I can find the meat. That's another definition of a logarithm. Divide by two, six. On oh, I did that. Divide by six on both sides. There. Now there's the definition of a logarithm. You get. Well, I've already done it. So there it is. And you're going to add two and divide by three. And I'm going to let you finish that one. Okay. Here's one right here. See, you got to change that to, well, you could actually divide by four and then you've got definition of logarithm. Turn. OK, that's we'll stop right there, but there's one right there that's not the definition of logarithm. That right there is different. This one is different. So I want you to make a note of that one. And we'll start with that one when we get back. So I need Miss Hollister. I need you to make a note right there. That that's the last note that I gave you all right there. All right, so now you should be working on 5.1 through 5.3 homework this weekend. I have covered all that I need to cover to give you a test on logarithms, but I'm going to cover homework questions uh, Monday, I mean Tuesday, and I'll look at the test with you on Tuesday, and I'll probably show you a little bit of 5.4 also, because I'm not going to cover very much in 5.4. All right, let me look at the what you call it, the attendance to make sure nobody else came in.